one of your uh, famous encounters was uh, a counter sniper engagement in which you had to outthink a very professional North Vietnamese sniper. That's right. Why don't yeah. you tell me that story? Well, it's just that uh, he was doing a bad job. This North Vietnamese sniper was sent down there to get me, and uh, which I really didn't appreciate. Marine Corps snipers are legendary, a very select few who are chosen for excellent marksmanship and highly trained in field craft, such as reconnaissance, observation, stalking, and call for fire. In Vietnam, there were a few men, Marines and Army, who became legends. One became so famous, even among the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong, Ho Chi Minh placed a bounty on his head. They even sent their top sniper, called the Cobra, to shoot Marines and lure the Marine sniper out to kill him. He was known as Whitefeather. How did he become so famous as a sniper? Why did the communists put so much effort into killing him? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author, and we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Carlos Norman Hathcock was born on May 20th, 1942 in Little Rock, Arkansas. He grew up in Wayne, Arkansas. He lived with his grandmother for 12 years of his life after his parents separated. Hathcock supported his extremely poor family by shooting and hunting at an early age with a 22 caliber J.C. Higgins single-shot rifle. He later graduated to using a Car 98 German Mauser that his father had brought back from World War II. Hathcock joined the Marines on May 20, 1959, at the age of 17, and rapidly became a known quantity. He had won the matches at Camp Perry in 1965 and the Wimbledon Cup shooting championships. In 1966, Hathcock deployed to South Vietnam as a military policeman, but later became a sniper after Captain, later Major, Edward James Land wanted snipers in every infantry platoon. At that time, there was no formal sniper school in the Marine Corps and snipers were designated according to a Marine's marksmanship record and field expertise. Land knew right away that Hathcock was a natural. Hathcock soon went to work protecting Marines, and one enemy was a woman. The story of the woman VC called the Apache has been questioned, but here is how Carlos explained it. She had been torturing captured Marines within earshot of the base. She skinned one kid that she had captured all night and half the next day. When she turned him loose, he died right in the wire, he recalled with a sigh. It was a very, very personal story. He finally killed her while out on a regular patrol mission, and he was calling it a day when a group of VC were spotted within range. Carlos said, I saw her squat down to tinkle. The guys with her tried to get her to stop, but I stopped her. I put one extra round in her for good measure. The NVA and VC called Hathcock Long Trang, which means white feather, because of the white feather he kept in the band on his bush hat. After a platoon of Vietnamese snipers failed to kill him, many Marines in the same area donned white feathers to deceive the enemy and confuse them. Ho Chi Minh placed a bounty of $30,000 on Hathcock because he was so effective, and through a mishap, they learned his name. It was believed that one of the local women working on the base accessed Hathcock's service record book. In those days, sniper kills were recorded in the SRB. Generally, rewards put on U.S. snipers ranged from $8 to $2,000. Hathcock held the record for the highest bounty ever placed on a Marine, and he killed every Vietnamese sniper who came after him. In one of the most remarkable sniper versus sniper duels in history, Hathcock and his spotter, John Roland Burke, were stalking the enemy sniper, called the Cobra, in the jungle near Hill 55. This was a fire base southwest of Da Nang, where the Cobra had already killed several Marines to lure Hathcock out to kill him. The stalking lasted for two days. Carlos said, he was close to being as good as I was, but ain't no way, ain't nobody that good. The Cobra fired at Hathcock as the Marine accidentally tripped over a decayed tree, forcing the shot to miss and hit his spotter's canteen. Then the Cobra took off running. Eventually, the two opposing teams worked their way around the entire area until they had completely exchanged positions. The Cobra was now facing the sun. 
When Hathcock saw a glint of light reflecting off the enemy sniper's scope in the bushes and fired at it, he shot through the scope, killing the sniper. That meant both men were looking at each other at the same time, but Hathcock was faster. Hathcock and Burke collected the dead sniper's rifle, as Hathcock wanted to keep it as a trophy, but it was later stolen from the armory after he checked it in. Once Hathcock and his spotter encountered an NVA company as they tried to cross a rice paddy, that battle lasted five days. On day one, Hathcock dropped the commander, and his spotter took a toll of the enemy as well. Then they killed more. To make a bad day worse for the enemy, Hathcock's spotter called in artillery support through the long nights as they constantly relocated. At daylight, the enemy would always attack where the two Marines had been the previous day, and the Marines picked off even more as they were bogged down in the knee-deep watery mud. Hathcock was offered a top-secret mission, which he accepted knowing nothing about it until he was briefed after acceptance. The mission was to kill a North Vietnamese general, far behind enemy lines, and he would be alone this time. Following his insertion several miles away, he entered the enemy-controlled area. It took him four days and three nights without sleep as he crawled inch by inch over 1,500 yards of an open field after already covering two miles just to get to that point. Hathcock was wearing a hastily assembled ghillie suit from the local vegetation to blend in with the surrounding terrain, and he was almost stepped on by patrols as he lay camouflaged with grass and vegetation in a meadow shortly after sunset. During this process, he came face to face with a deadly bamboo viper and managed to outlast the reptile until it crawled away. He then managed to complete the stalk and get into a concealed position, and not long afterward, the general came into view. Hathcock fired a single shot that struck the general in the chest, killing him with, from a distance of 700 yards using his preferred Winchester 300 Magnum bolt-action rifle. Carlos was deep inside the enemy compound, but this was the easy part. Now he had to escape the area without being captured. His egress and evasion was on. He egressed out of the area as the soldiers went into the trees to hide, and he made his escape without being actively pursued. That is the toughest part of a deep penetration mission, surviving after making the shot. Another one of Carlos Hathcock's most insane shots was a 2,500-yard kill with the M250 caliber machine gun set to single shot. He had just fitted the optics and was ranging when an enemy appeared downrange, exactly where the ANPVS-2 telescope was pointing. One long-range shot, one confirmed kill. This was Hathcock's last mission before he rotated back to the States in 1967, but he returned in 1969 to command a platoon of snipers, where he was almost killed. On September 16, 1969, Hathcock was riding on a LVTP-5 armored personnel carrier full of Marines on Highway 1, north of Landing Zone Baldy, a U.S. Marine Corps and Army Army of Republic Vietnam base located northwest of Chu Lai in Quang Nam Province, when the APC rolled over an anti-tank mine. The explosion rocked the heavy vehicle and wounded all the Marines on board, and a fire broke out. Hathcock jumped off and ran to the rear and pulled seven Marines from the vehicle, which was an incinerator. Hathcock then collapsed, suffering first, second, and third degree burns to his face, arms, and legs, and his uniform was aflame. Another Marine grabbed him and pulled him away and placed him in water alongside the road in a rice paddy, and he was still smoking. Hathcock had no idea how badly he had been burnt. Hathcock and the seven Marines he rescued were evacuated by helicopter to hospital ship USS Repose then to a naval hospital in Tokyo, Japan, finally arriving at the burn center at Brook Army Medical Center in San Antonio, Texas. While recovering, Hathcock received the Purple Heart. Nearly 30 years later, he received the Silver Star for this action saving those Marines. His recovery was a very slow process. Although Hathcock had 93 confirmed kills, which had to be confirmed by the spotter and a third party who had to be an officer, he estimated that he had killed between 300 and 400 enemy personnel during the Vietnam War. Hathcock was never certain, since a hit did not, did not always mean a kill, and a third-party confirmation was difficult, especially when targets were behind enemy lines, which was the most common problem for Hathcock or any sniper. However, not to be sidelined, Hathcock returned to active duty, and along with now Major Ed Land, established the Marine Corps Sniper School at Marine Corps Base Quantico, Virginia. The results of his efforts saw the establishments of scout sniper schools at Stones Bay, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina,
Camp Pendleton, California, and Marine Corps Base Kaneohe Bay in Hawaii. Today, the original school at Quantico is home to the Scout Sniper Instructor School. Despite returning to active duty, Hathcock was in daily constant pain, but he continued teaching snipers. Hathcock's health began to deteriorate, and in 1975 he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and he was medically retired with full benefits and 100% of his pay, just 55 days short of the full 20-year retirement requirement. Hathcock was honored by having a rifle named after him, derived from the older semi-automatic M14, and named the Springfield Armory M25 White Feather due to his nickname. I met Carlos Hathcock twice as he was one of several military snipers I wanted to interview, but I did not get the chance. Having been a sniper myself, I was well versed in his exploits, along with other snipers in history, a couple that I did interview. Carlos summed up his philosophy, quote, I like shooting and I love hunting, but I never did enjoy killing anybody. It was my job. If I didn't get those bastards, then they were going to kill a lot of those kids dressed up like Marines. That's the way I looked at it. Carlos Hathcock, the legendary White Feather, died on February 22, 1999 in Virginia Beach, Virginia. He is buried at Woodlawn Memorial Gardens in Norfolk, Virginia, and his legend still stands. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free, and please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas, and we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.